Uh, greetings, Matt fans. All right, so this is one of our last topics here in Chapter 4B, and it's called Related Rates. Here's the topic right there. And these are uh, four examples that uh, just kind of give you a little bit of idea of how to do the related rate problems. All right, so let's start out. This is our key. All right. Um, really what I want you to do is before you even start these problem math fans, um, I want you to read pages... Uh, pages uh, 246 to 247 okay and it's the stuff in the purple it really gives you a good explanation on how to um, begin the related rates problems and how then you know how to plug things in how to solve and interpret your uh, your results okay so it's just a really good thing to do that before you get you begin so if you want to hit pause and resume after you have read that okay now that you've read it Let's just start out with this problem here. Oil that is spilled from a ruptured tanker spreads in a circular pattern whose radius increases at a rate. So right off the bat here, I see a couple of key words, math fans. Okay, it's increasing at a rate. Okay, that rate, that word rate is pretty significant because remember derivative is change in, right? You have change in position, which is velocity. So there, the increasing at a rate of 2 feet per second, that's going to be some derivative. That's something that we're going to actually plug in. Okay, um, so it's uh, the radius is increasing. So let's actually take a look at that. The radius is increasing at a rate of two feet per second. So really, I'll start this out a little bit, just kind of showing you some different things here. But if I tell you the radius is increasing at a rate of, that means it's the change in the radius with respect to time. So dr dt. That's what we're, that's what that value is. So dr dt is two feet per second. Okay, so look for the word change or something that has to do with change uh, or rate, which is change. Okay, uh, and the uh, question asks you is how fast is the area of the spill increasing when the radius of the spill is 60 feet? This should be spill, S-P-I-L-L. -L. Okay, and so, um, well, let's think about it. First of all, how uh, it's a circular pattern. So I have a nice circular pattern here, and I have a radius r. So we're asking how fast is the area increasing? So think about it. I'm looking for dA dt. Do you guys agree with that? Okay. Um, and what I have here is I have the area of a circle is pi, area equals pi r squared. Okay. And the, what I don't want to do is I don't want to plug in are here. I mean, you're going to look at it and go, oh, well, I can um, uh, I can say, oh, the radius of the spill is 60 feet. If you plug in 60 into R right now, you're just finding the area at that instant time, which is when it's 60 feet. Okay, I want to know the change in area, how fast the area is changing in time. I don't want to know what the area is. If I know what the area is, you put 60 in there and you get, you know, 3,600 pi and you're done with the problem. But I want to know how fast the area is changing, so I'm looking for dA dt. So this is the deal, math fans. Um, I am going to write this in red because you are going to use this so much. You are going to use, for many of these problems, if not all, implicit differentiation. Okay? You're going to be using the implicit differentiation. Um, and it's, uh, it's going to be with respect to time. Okay, that's the way, that's how I first started this out here, right? It's dr dt, and I am, uh, that's what I'm given, and I, I am looking for dA dt. Okay, but implicit differentiation is going to be huge. All right, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t. So do you guys agree, if I take the derivative of a with respect to, d, to t, it's just taking the derivative of a, which is 1, and then dA dt. Okay, remember when we took the derivative of um, y with respect to x? Remember we said uh, if you had a y in there, you said, oh, the derivative of y is 1, and then you have uh, dy dx. It's the same idea. Okay, derivative of a is 1, and then it's dA dt. Okay, equals pi, and then um, again, we're going to take the derivative with respect to t, so you guys agree it's 2r, and then dr dt. 
Okay, that's that's a derivative with respect to t. All right, so um, now let's plug things in because look what I have, math fans. Now I have the radius is 60. That goes into r right there. Okay, and I have the rate is 2 dr dt. So I have dA dt is equal to pi times 2 times 60 feet times 2 feet per second. So I'll write feet there. And that kind of helps you actually a little bit with the uh, units, right? Um, it's 60 feet and then 2 feet per second. Well, do you guys agree when I put those units together, I get feet squared per second? Beautiful. Deriv it's dA dt. So the change in area, which is, of course, units squared, feet squared per second. So the units work out really well for us. And we combine stuff together, dA dt is equal to 240 pi feet squared per second. And that's my answer. OK? Just you know, a little explanation going on here. But again, you got to follow the rules that I showed you. And again, it's so important to that you've read that, uh, that information in purple. OK, so um, an explanation of what this is. When the radius of the spill is 60 feet, how fast is that area increasing? It's increasing pretty quickly. It's increasing 240 pi, which is, um, you know, it's about 750 uh, square feet per second. It's a pretty big, uh, uh, pretty big increase. And obviously, when the when the radius is really really small, uh, it's not going to increase that much. But as the radius gets really 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 big, then the uh, uh, the area actually gets big faster. Okay, let's look at number two. Very exciting. If the rocket shown in the figure is rising vertically at 880 feet per second. Oh, look what we have here. It's rising vertically. This is a rate. Do you guys agree with that? So that is some rate. I'm just going to write rate here because we're going to kind of think about that in a second. And if when it is 4,000 feet up, how fast is the camera to the rocket distance changing at that instant? So how fast is the camera to the rocket distance? Okay, so that is going to be um, another rate that we're looking for too. Um, so anyway, let's kind of set this up here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to label things a little bit. I'm going to say this is A, this is B, and C. So a nice little Pythagorean theorem here. And you guys agree it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right. And what I have here is I want to take... Uh, first of all, I know C is um, C is 5,000. How do I know that? I just did Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, so C is equal to 5,000 feet. Now again, I don't plug things in, um, but let's let's think about what we're looking for. How fast is the camera to the rocket distance changing at that instant? So really, I'm looking for the camera to the rocket, how fast is that changing? So I want to know basically change in C. I want to see dc dt. That's truly what I'm looking for. Okay, that's my my uh, unknown variable here. The change in C uh, with respect to time, because how fast is it changing? Okay, it's like a, a velocity. I guess if you want to look at that. All right. Um, so let's plug some things in here. Well, actually, first of all, I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative, because we're actually given Oh, we're given one of these rates here. Let's take the derivative implicitly here. And do you guys agree it's going to be uh, 2a dA dt plus 2b db dt equals 2c dc dt. OK? And I'm solving for this. And let's take a look at some of the other things I have here, math fans. Well, first of all, do you guys agree I have A, B, and C? I have the values to plug into here, here, and here. I have those values, right? 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. That's pretty easy. Now, let's take a look at D, A, D, T. Um, what's going on with, uh, with this? Isn't it, well, isn't it rising? Isn't my rate 880 feet per second? So change in distance over change in time. That's my derivative. So D, A, D, T. That's your 880 feet per second. 
Let's take a look at dB dt. How is this changing as the rocket goes up? Okay, this distance, do you guys agree, that distance is not changing. It's always going to be 3,000. If I, In other words, if I went to the camera and I walked 3,000 feet, I would look straight up. And no matter what, if I walk 3,000 feet, that rocket is still going to be straight up. Okay, uh, assuming again the rocket is rising vertically, right? So in other words, there is no change in B. So there's no since there's no change in B with respect to T, it's zero feet per second. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is if I plug everything in now, I'm going to get two times A, which is four thousand times d t which is 880 feet per second. All right, and well, I'm, I'm going to leave the units off here just to, so we have a little more room here. And then plus 2 times b, and that's 3,000 feet. And then, of course, uh, db dt is 0. Sweet. And then 2, and then c is, um, we figured that with the Pythagorean theorem, that's 5,000 feet. And it's dc, dt. That's what we're looking for. So that's out of there. And what I wound up having is um, 10,000 dc, dt is equal to uh, just a big number, 7,040,000. Okay. And, of course, I'm going to divide by 10,000. And I get dc dt is equal to 704. And this is, of course, uh, change in position or change in time, right? So it's feet per second. That's your answer. All right. So, and it kind of makes sense a little bit. Um, do you guys agree? It's, since it's rising at 880 feet per second, okay, uh, that change in from the camera to the rocket, it's not going to go as fast. It's almost like the closer you get to the rocket, the faster it seems like it's going to go up, right? And as you back farther and farther and farther away, it's you, you don't have to look up a little bit slower, a little bit slower, right? You don't have to look up as much. As opposed to if you were right next to the rocket, you know, your neck would snap back because you'd have to look up really fast, and that rate, that change, rate of change would actually be fast versus a long distance way where it's, you know, a couple feet per second, you're looking up higher and higher and higher watching that uh, rocket launch up. Okay? All right, uh, let's do the next example here. A little more challenging example. Uh, a liquid is to be cleared of sediment by pouring it through a cone-shaped filter as shown. The height of the cone is 16 inches, and the radius at the base is 4 inches. If a liquid is flowing out of the cone at 2 cubic inches per minute, oh, look at that, flowing out at 2 cubic inches per minute, what does it look like? it looks like a rate of change. In fact, isn't that two cubic inches per minute? Hmm, dv dt, right? A volume. Makes sense, right? It's, it's the change in volume over change in time. And then the question is, how fast is the depth decreasing? All right, so we're looking for, um, we call it the depth or the height. Do you guys agree? Because we're going to talk about a cone in terms of height. Uh, this is that value here, and we're looking for dh dt. How fast is that height changing with respect to time? Okay, so very interesting. You just got to be really, really careful here what you, uh, you know, what you're looking for. And again, um, here it says um, how fast is the depth decreasing when the level is eight inches deep? Please do not plug in that eight inches deep into the equation because it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, you would get the exact volume at that time or the exact height at that time, um, and you don't want that. You want to actually find the change. All right, so the tricky thing about this is you've got, uh, this is your triangle. Okay, and uh, this triangle is uh, 16 this way and 4 this way. And the deal is, um, well, first of all, let me, let me write out my equation. The volume of a cone is one-third, if you don't know that, one-third pi r squared h. Okay? And the, the deal is, math fans, 
I know dvdt, which is great because when I take the derivative, that's what I'll get with that dvdt. And I'm looking for dhdt. I don't know anything how the radius is changing. This is really kind of an unknown thing. All right. In fact, I don't really know any information about that except that the original cone is four, uh, four inches in with a radius. Okay, but otherwise, I don't know any change in radius. So, almost like when we did optimization, you want to try to get it in terms of the variables that you know. Okay, so when I take the derivative, I know dh dt. I just need to find, uh, I need dv dt, but I don't know anything about dr dt. So, I don't, I, what I really need to do is I need to substitute and I need to get rid of that. Well, the way we're going to get rid of that is we're going to kind of come up with a nice little friendly formula. So, I drew this one triangle, a right triangle, um, 4 and 16. And do you guys agree that other triangle, let's see, let me just draw this. I want to relate H and R together. That's what I'm looking for. So do you guys agree this is R and this is H? And again, I don't really know, um, I don't know the values, but I can relate them. Do you guys agree that these are similar triangles? Okay. And what I can do then is I can set up a nice little proportion. I can say H over R is equal to uh, 16 over 4 because I know those are similar right triangles. All right? And that's just going to relate my H and my R. Okay? And I'm not, don't look at this and say, well, wait a second, Mr. Curvis, that's, I know this is 8. I'm not, even, I don't even care that it's 8. I just am trying to relate H and R together. It's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to relate H and R. And again, these are similar triangles because, you know, you've got, of course, that angle is the angle down the, the, the tip of the cone there, right? And, you know, it's angle, angle similarity. So I know there's similar triangles. That's why I can make this H over R equals 16 over 4. All right, so um, if I cross multiply, I get 4H is equal to 16R. And I get uh, a divide by 16, and I get uh, R is equal to H over 4, which is exactly what I'm trying to do here, is I'm trying to then substitute this into uh, the R squared. So I get volume is equal to one third pi, and it's h over four squared times h. So volume equals uh, just if I simplify this, well here I get one third pi times h squared over sixteen times h. So simplified volume is equal to uh, pi over forty eight h cubed. Okay? That's in terms of just V and H, which is beautiful because now when I take the derivative, okay, I'm good to go here, right? I know my dv dt, I'm looking for dh dt, and I have an H um, because I'm going to need the H. So let's, let's take the derivative now implicitly. Uh, derivative of V with respect to T is uh, going to be dv dt. And this is really easy. This is just using um, the power rule, right? So the 3 comes in front. So I have uh, 3 pi over 48 h squared. And of course, d h dt. Okay, don't forget that. That's important. All right. And then um, I want to, I can plug some things in here. Um, of course, I had dv dt is equal to 2. And that's uh, 3 over 48 is just pi over 16. Uh, h is 8. Now I'm using that value of 8. So h squared uh, d h d t. Right? And, uh, you know, just kind of flip things over again. And I get uh, d h d t when I divide. Um, well, it's equal to, right, uh, this is 64 here. So it's 64 pi over 16. So it's really equal to. Uh, 4 pi. Do you guys agree with that? So, and I divide, so here I can write this out. This is 4 pi right here. dh dt is equal to 2. And I divide both sides by 4 pi, so I get dh dt is equal to 2 over 4 pi. And of course, what are our units? Okay, it's change in height with respect to time. So height is just in inches, so it's going to be inches per second. And that's your final answer. Okay, a little complicated, but notice some all the steps that I did here. Okay, you got to take that derivative correctly, and then you're looking for change rate, uh, change in 
in area, change in volume, whatever, that's your D by DT, what D what by whatever by DT. Okay? Our right, last problem here on this note sheet. A television camera at ground level is filming the liftoff of a space shuttle. And there's only one more. The time I'm making this video right now is um, uh, towards the end of May in 2011. And I believe there's just one more space shuttle launch. And then that's the end of our space shuttle. Uh, which is kind of amazing because I remember as a kid watching the first space shuttle. We actually taped it on our VCR to watch it. And it was kind of cool. Anyway. Um, a television camera at ground level is filming the liftoff of a space shuttle that rises vertically. Hmm, interesting. Kind of had a problem a little similar to this before. Uh, according to the position function, S equals 5 or 50 T squared, where S is measured in feet and T is measured in seconds. The camera is 2,000 feet from the launch pad. Find the rate of change of the angle of elevation. Hmm, rate of change of the angle of elevation. Well, that's probably going to be something theta, so we're probably looking for d theta dt, aren't we? Very interesting. Ten seconds after liftoff. So that sounds like it's going to be a value of t. We're going to be using uh, that little friendly number there, 2,000 feet. So let's draw a triangle here just to see what we've got. Okay, and this is, um, it's 2,000 feet, so this is your um, camera. And this is your space shuttle. And this is 2,000 feet. Okay. And um, it's rising vertically according to the position function S equals 5. So it's S equals 50. It's S, right? S equals 50 T squared. Now the deal is I'm giving you it's rising according to that function. So do you agree that I can actually find this distance? Because I gave you a function, how it's rising vertically. Well, I know it's it's 10 seconds after liftoff, so S is equal to 50 times 10 squared. Okay? Which is going to be 5,000. That is a little more work. So 5,000 feet. A little bit more work. And then, of course, I can use Pythagorean theorem again, and I am just going to actually, it's, right, it's 2,000 squared plus 5,000 squared, which is uh, actually turns out to be 29 million. So I'm not going to simplify it because it doesn't really simplify that nicely. But this is the square root of 29 million. Square root of the current balance in my checking account. JK, JK. It's not, not true. I have more than that. I, I'm kidding again. Okay. Um, anyway, so that information is given. We got 2,000 feet. We got 5,000 feet. We have uh, the square root of 29 million feet. Okay. Um, I'm looking for the uh, the angle. Find the rate of change in the angle of elevation. So do you guys agree? Remember, angle of elevation is from the uh, from the base or from the x-axis, right from the ground going up. So this is my angle of elevation. That's why I put theta there. So let's uh, let's see what kind of interesting things we have here. Um, well, do you guys agree I have uh, the 2,000 and I've got the 5,000 feet? So what I can do is I can um, come up with just an equation, right? Can I say tangent of theta? Because what I want to do is I want to use these uh, tangent, of course, is using opposite and adjacent. Do you guys agree with that? So tangent is using opposite and adjacent. Well, this is the deal. I know you want to use... Um, that 5,000 feet, but remember that that value we're going to use later on, but I'm really using this value right here, the 50t squared. The reason I'm using the 50t squared is because if you plug that 5,000 feet right into it, what happens when you take the derivative of that? It's zero, right? The derivative of a constant is zero, because it's at that instant, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, 5,000 feet, but I want to know the rate of change, okay? So its tangent is equal to um, opposite, which is 50t squared over adjacent, which is a constant because there it's, it's, it's remaining constant, isn't it? Isn't it always 2,000 feet? So 2,000. So that's actually probably the hardest part of this whole thing is just to set up because you guys don't want to take the derivative implicitly. You just need to kind of put things all together here. All right? So um, let's take the derivative now. Um, 
What's the derivative of tangent of theta? Isn't it secant squared of theta? d theta dt, right? Because remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to time. Very important. And then that's equal to, um, here I can simplify, uh, 50 over 2,000. Isn't that the same thing as, um, it's just t squared over 40, I believe. That's just a lot easier to deal with. Okay, and you know I don't care how you look at it. To me, it's easier just to go one over forty t squared. You can use the quotient rule; it's going to give the same thing. But you guys agree you put the two in front, so it's really twenty or two over forty t. And remember, it's dt dt. Oh, wait a second! Just like when you took the derivative of, uh, with respect to x, and there was an x there, you never put dx dx because what's dx dx? It's the same thing as one. Same thing as dt dt. It's the same thing as one. Okay, so then I can just simplify this. I get secant squared of theta d theta dt equals 1 over 20t. Okay, now it's basically plugging it in. Um, it's secant squared of theta. And remember, secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine, if you have forgotten that, right? And remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. All right, so uh, we basically get hypotenuse is the square root of 29 million. So I'm going to bring this back up to here now. So I get the square root of 29 million over uh, 2,000. And of course, that's squared. That's secant squared of theta. And it's d theta dt, which is what we're looking for, is equal to 1 over 20. And what's t? t is 10 seconds right here. Okay, so it's 10. And, uh, you know, that's obviously it was kind of nice not simplifying that square root of 29 million. Sometimes you don't always know that, but I didn't simplify it. So I get uh, 29 million, if I square it, over uh, 4 million. That's 2,000 squared. Okay, and that's uh, d theta dt is equal to 1 half, right? 10 over 20. All right, and these zeros I can cancel out here. And basically, I'm going to multiply. I have d theta over dt. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 over 29. So it's 1 half times 4 over 29 to simplify things. So d theta dt is equal to, that's a 2 and a 1. So I get uh, 2 over 29. What are the units? Well, it's a change in, in theta over t. So I know it's per second, and you always do any kind of trick problems in radians. So it's 2 over 29 radians per second, and that's your final answer. Okay, a little tricky, but again, you just got to be really careful and just kind of follow everything, um, what you're looking for. Uh, probably the trickiest thing on this problem, math fans, was actually knowing that this was 5,000 feet, just having to realize that, because I needed that 5,000 feet in order to get the hypotenuse, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten that hypotenuse. Of the square root of 29 million. So anyway, that's it. Uh, again, make sure you are reading those uh, those two pages, 246 to 247. Implicit differentiation, taking the derivative with respect to time, um, looking for anything that says rate of change, that's going to be a derivative. Anything that's a physical value that you're plugging in, wait till you take the derivative to plug it in. Don't plug it in immediately, otherwise everything will cancel out and you'll have a lot of things that are zero and you'll have the wrong answer. All right. Anyway, that's it, Matt fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.